UK, once every 10 years, all steam engines must go through a standard overhaul in order to operate. During this downtime, the engine is stripped right down to the frames and every part of the engine is checked. Once all the checks are complete, the engine is reassembled and subject to several tests and running in, is then certified as fit to run for another 10 years. This overhaul not only looks at the boiler, but at every component of the engine. What needs replacing, what needs repairing, and also what can be upgraded. Generally, the engine that goes into the works is usually not exactly the same when it comes out. As steam is now a rarity on the mainline, the process of an overhaul is not as sleek as it once was. When steam and steam engines were ten a penny, the process of an overhaul was slimline, with everything being done in-house on a conveyor system. Nowadays, overhauls are lengthy processes, with many parts being shipped all over the world to be worked on, only to be brought back and put back together like one giant jigsaw. The Great Western Railway, keen on efficiency, was keen to improve on this laborious task. Chief Mechanical Engineer George Churchwood wanted to standardise the locomotive classes so that parts would be easier to make and maintain and that parts were now interchangeable. This now included the boiler. The boilers were divided into various classes based upon the boiler's physical size. Now the parts were interchangeable, it meant that overhauling got a whole lot easier. When a GWR engine hit the works ready for its overhaul, its parts were removed as normal and inspected. But instead of overhauling the boiler while the engine was waiting, a boiler from a previously overhauled locomotive would be ready, fully refurbished and ready to go. This massively reduced time in the works and much needed engine space. When the engine was gone, the team would then overhaul the removed boiler at their leisure. That is until the next engine rolled in, but by then the boiler was completed. Of course, boilers used for broad and narrow gauge could not be interchanged per se, and boilers tended to be swapped for similar engines that were suited to the weight of the boiler. Then there was dome versus domeless, tube number, the list goes on. But it was time-saving, if a little confusing. The thing is, because boilers are individually marked, we can trace them, and this is exactly what we can do with Boiler 2961. Thanks to a dedicated railway enthusiast called Craig Astle, we have a comprehensive history of this boiler. No one really knows when this boiler was first built, but it was suspected it was built between 1915 and 1920. We know this as the first confirmed record of the boiler being fitted was to the Lady Class locomotive, Lady of Lynn. The Lady of Lynn was built in Swindon and was part of 10 locomotives belonging to the Lady Class. These engines were built in 1906 and were named after mystical or famous ladies. Lady of Lynn was given the number 2906 and had a distinct shorter smoke box and a tapered boiler. Although smaller than some of the other classes, they weren't slouches and were mixed traffic engines. Lady of Lynn was redrawn in 1952, but is still around in some part as her connecting rods were reused very recently for the Lady of Legend project. With its new boiler, Lady of Lynn covered 94,086 miles before it was removed in 1925. In November 1925, the boiler was fitted to engine number 2872. The engine had no name, but it was a brute. It pulled heavy goods trains. 2872 was built in November 1918, so it was a little early for its 10 yearly. It was ordered as part of a job for the demanding role of moving coal to the naval bases during World War I. These engines were quite literally the workhorses of the GWR. Due to the shortage of coal in 1945, 2872 went through a rather unusual change. It was converted to oil. It was an experiment to see if changing the fuel would make the engine run just as good. 
2872 outpaced itself and soon many of its brothers were converted to oil running. Sadly, thanks to logistics and getting the oil, the plan was abandoned and the engine was reverted back to coal once again, before being scrapped in 1963, having the majority of its class live to see the end of steam. With 2961, it clocked up 42,731 miles. The next engine to be fitted with 2961 was the Japanese Monarch, an engine from the 4000 class. These were the original Kings, but renamed to Monarch after the 6000 series were introduced in 1927. The 4000 class ruled the Great Western Passenger Circuit, and they took the best of the best. Interestingly, Japanese Monarch was renamed again to King Richard in the 1940s, due to the name not keeping in public ideals during the war. The Monarch ran its last in 1950, and it was very likely scrapped soon after, but not before putting 74,985 miles on the boiler's mileage count. We know that from historical records the boiler was removed from the Monarch in 1929, however it doesn't reappear until 1933. No one knows what happened during those missing four years, but it was likely put to use before another engine was needing overhaul again. That engine was Tinton Abbey. They were built at the end of the 4000 series and were named after abbeys in the GWR area. 4063 Tinton Abbey was one of a number that were actually rebuilt into the castle class, but unusually they retained their original names. Tinton Abbey managed to last to the last days of steam and was scrapped a year later. It clocked 145,772 miles. In a documented first for this boiler, this boiler was paired with a brand new engine, Alton Hall. This engine had just come straight from the works in Swindon and was part of the Hall class. It mostly worked in Wales. Its history is a typical of a Hall class, a mixed traffic engine with a particular love of gradients. They were designed by John Collett with a total of 259 built. In fact, Alton Hall survived until the end of steam where she sat in the infamous Woodham scrapyard where she was there for over 20 years. In 1981, she was sold and restored to steam again in 1998. It was around this time that a certain boy wizard gained popularity. Warner Brothers wanted to create a new film depicting Harry Potter's exploits and needed a Hogwarts Express and the newly refurbished Alton Hall was the ideal candidate. It was renamed to Hogwarts Castle and carried a Hogwarts Express headboard. Interestingly, it was allowed to retain its GWR number and it's the one thing that is consistent in every Harry Potter film. Among railway enthusiasts, kind of makes us giggle as it's a hall that thinks it's a castle. Sadly, the boiler ticket expired in 2014 and Alton Hall is now on semi-permanent loan at the Harry Potter Studios in London. Under this newfound celebrity, 2961 covered the most mileage out of all of the engines, a total of 323,636, with both the engine and the boiler going through an overhaul together. Quite unusual for the GWR. We have another gap in history, but the story picks up in 1948 when another hall now became the boiler's owner, Trentham Hall. Trentham Hall was created in Swindon in 1931. It had an unassuming life and got on with the work before it was scrapped in 1960, but it did rank up an impressive 98,160 miles and was removed just nine years before the locomotive was withdrawn. In 1951, Butler's Hall was fitted with the boiler. Butler's Hall, built during the war in 1940, was built in Swindon Works and was put to work for the war effort. It probably would have survived to the end of steam, however on the 11th of February 1961 she was taking an express passenger train through York to Swindon, when near Rugby Central Station she collided with a derailed goods wagon that was blocking the upline. Many of her passengers escaped injury but her driver was crushed on the footplate as she tumbled. She was deemed a total loss and was scrapped in the very factory that created her. This would be the last time a hall would seat this boiler, but not before it clocked up 34,956 miles. The next class to carry the boiler would be the Grange class. This would be a whole new type of class, the 6800 class, but it was the Granges that would take on 2961. Firstly, Arlington Grange, 
again built for mixed traffic, the engines were derived from a multitude of standard components that would be easy to repair and replace, and the plans for their arrival were in place as early as 1901. But sadly it was pushed back and the first engine didn't roll off the production line until 1936. Although there was plenty of mixed traffic engines, many of the star class and earlier classics were getting rather tired. To replace stock, 100 locomotives were withdrawn and were replaced with the Manor and the Grange classes. As the Grange class is a smaller version of the Hall class, Arlington Grange was the first engine to produce, but this did not spare the engine from the Cutter's Church, and it was withdrawn in 1964. It recorded an impressive 214,369 miles with the boiler before passing its boiler to its brother Houghton Grange in 1957. Houghton Grange, Grange worked on for the better part of its life in and about outer Taunton and was mostly hauling freight. It worked quietly and diligently but sadly faced the cutter's torch in 1964. It contributed 106,971 miles to 2961's mileage count. We then come to the boiler's last and now current recipient, 2874. 2874 is a large freight train. Like others in the 2800 class, they had no name, and an unusual 2800 arrangement, first in the UK. It cost just under £5,000 to build and entered service in the beginning of December 1918. She initially helped with the Jellicoe Express runs transporting coal from Wales to Scotland before helping all around the Great Western region with freight and large goods trains. She was one of a number of the 2800 class that saw the end of steam and was condemned in 1963 and with it 2961's travels came to an end but not after adding 84,775 miles. 2874 and 2961 sat for almost 50 years and was moved from railway yard to railway yard. It eventually ended up on the Gloucester and Warwickshire Railway where a trust was set up with one purpose, to get the engine working. The railway transferred ownership to the trust in 2016 and the race was on to get the engine back into running order. When the trust opened the boiler, there was a surprise to see ash collected in the smoke box and clinker in a firebox from a last firing in 1963. They removed the boiler and got to work. It is likely that unless something catastrophic happens, that the 2961 boiler will be forever paired with 2874, but who knows. Hopefully so though, because the trust is hoping to add a few more miles to that infamous clock. Their website is regularly updated with news and progress, so we hope to see the engine soon. As for the mileage, after some suns and head scratching, I have calculated that the boiler alone would have done 1 million 220,441 miles and that's the miles we can verify. To put it into perspective, that's the equivalent of travelling around the earth 40 times and still have over 20,000 miles to spare.